Hi guys, this is Jake with Think Free Lift Free and today I am getting ready to install my breaker panel. This is basically for anybody out there that's uh, doing any kind of DIY solar that's looking for a breaker box that can handle both AC and DC. I will show you how I install my breakers uh, for my AC side and then I'll also show you how I go about installing my DC appliances to the breaker box. Specifically, it's for the WFCO breaker box. So this can run a 30 amp service or a 50 amp ser service. I am doing a 30 amp service for my install, for my van. This is what the breaker panel looks like. You've got your AC side on the left here, and then you got your DC side on the right. It's gonna go in that space there. You can see all my wires connected there. So these thicker wires are for the AC, for all my AC circuits. I'm gonna be installing 130 amp breaker. These are Hum D breakers, and here's my AC out basically that's gonna come into my breaker panel I'm gonna have four circuits I have tandem breakers here with 15 and 20 amp services as you can see here my electrical setup is coming together I do have my uh, grow what installed but I do need to get my breaker panel installed and then I can install my batteries and then I can actually test everything and make sure everything is working properly. I'm gonna do the best that I can to show you how I install this breaker panel and hopefully it's helpful to some people out there that's doing any kind of um, off-grid solar or a van build or maybe doing a small cabin or something like that. This will work very well for that as well. So first of all, I'm going to feed all my wires through some of the holes here in the back that I've punched out. I'm going to feed my DC wire on this side, and then I'm going to feed my AC wire on this side. So the first wire going through is this really thick cable. It's coming from my GrowWatt inverter. It's going coming from my AC out on the GrowWatt and it's coming straight into my breaker panel here. I'm gonna feed that through. And I'm gonna take all my AC circuits. I have four circuits in total. I'm gonna feed them through this bigger hole here. I'm feeding this wire through the top here. This is the wire that comes from your battery to supply power to the distribution panel. This wire comes from your batteries. In my case, it's actually my converter since I'm running a, tw uh, a 24 volt battery. This is gonna down convert it from 24 volts to 12 volts. This is a 10 gauge. I'm only running 40 amps max. That's what the converter uses, it's 10 gauge. I'm gonna feed through all of my DC appliances. Now that everything is fed through, I'm going to get this breaker panel screwed in and then I can start connecting wires. So you can see here, I've got all my 
I got my four circuits, my AC circuits. I'm gonna have two 15 amp and two 20 amp circuits. And then I have my 30 amp service coming in right there. And I have my DC side, my cables coming in from my battery. Or in this instance from my converter, I'm converting it down from 24 volts to 12 volts. And then I have all of my circuits, my DC circuits, my 12 volt DC circuits coming in here. My fan, my water pump, my puck lights, and also the PC fan. This PC fan that also has a switch down here that I can turn it on and off. So I need to strip these wires and then I need to start installing this. I've loosely put the breaker panel in there just so that I have a little bit more um, space in case I need to pull some of the wires more. The first thing I'm gonna install is the cables coming from the battery or from the converter. You got your positive side on the left here and then your negative side on the right. So I'm gonna put my negative cable right there my black and then my white cable I'm gonna put it right there both of these are positive both of these are negative So negative side, positive side, coming from your battery or from a converter. And your converter is already connected to either your um, positive and negative bus bars. So it's already coming from the battery. So you're just gonna have these two wires coming in. But if you're hooking it directly to your battery, then this is your positive and negative. Negative on the right, positive on the left okay something that I have not shown you is my ground wire my chassis wire that's connected to the frame as you can see there the bare metal it's been completely wire brushed so it's all the way to the bare metal. That first washer has got my main ground on there and then there's a lock washer and then a nut and then I have on the second one here is a eight gauge going to my DC distribution panel um, for the AC side. That is my chassis ground all right so i went ahead and connected my 24 volt to 12 volt uh, converter which technically is also pretty much the battery cables coming into the dc supply so you got your positive on the left here the white wire and then you got your negative on the right and as soon as you connect this make sure that all your DC power is off if you have it on a breaker I have it on a 40 amp breaker here and that's off there's no batteries connected so I know there's no electricity coming in but as soon as you connect these it will power up this bar for your DC appliances I've also connected my puck lights this is the positive side and then down here is the negative side there's a little tab right here, you can push that down and the whole board, the whole circuit board will come loose. 
and you can connect your your negatives easier so I'm gonna go ahead and connect all my DC circuits and then we'll move on to the AC side all right so you just want to strip off like a quarter inch and then uh, screw it into the positive terminal there this one the second one is for my vent fan my ceiling fan and then the negative goes in that spot so you're just gonna unscrew that screw plug your negative in there and then screw it back in and it really helps to uh, loosen this this board here um, it's a lot easier to work with all right so I got all my DC circuits connected As you can see here the red all the positives over here and all the negatives down there so there's plenty more here uh, there's a total of 15 on this board so you can run 15 different appliances and this is rated at a 100 amp um, circuit board however I am only running 40 amps through this board so uh, but it is capable of doing 100 amp so if you are going to do 100 amp you need to go with thicker wire here I have 10 gauge coming in because that is what the converter required 10 gates will be fine for that particular purpose but if you are using the entire 100 amps I would suggest going with thicker wire probably gauge 6 for 100 amps this is a existing outlet already I am gonna take these off and just uh, kind of wrap them up and tuck them into this corner I'm not going to be using this outlet because it's behind the panel. Spot one and two has a max amp rating for 30 amps and then all the other ones has a max amp rating for 20 amps. So if you have some higher powered uh, devices that need 30 amps, you can use those on slot one and two. All the other ones from F3 all the way down to F15 can only handle 20 amps. So if you got some power hungry stuff like slide outs on an RV, you're gonna wanna use uh, F1 or F2 um, because you can use a 30 amp uh, fuse in, that, uh, in those spots. All the other ones are 20 max. I hope this video is helpful to some people out there. Um, if you like this kind of content or if it fascinates you in some way because you're busy with a build yourself, um, please hit the like button, please subscribe. It really helps the channel grow. I'm going to be doing a lot more DIY stuff in the future. Not only for this particular project with the van, but I'm also looking for off-grid property. So I have a ground wire coming in here that's connected to the chassis of the van. So that's going to ground my AC side. Um, by the way, this is 8, eight gauge wire. That's what the panel required. Okay, so the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna strip this 10-3 AC cord. This is my AC out coming into my panel. This is gonna go to my 30 amp service. That's gonna sit right here. It's a single pole home, home D breaker. Your white's gonna go in the front here. The green's gonna go on the ground chassis there, or the ground uh, bus bar. And then the black's gonna go into the breaker. And this hold, hold down, you're gonna wanna take that off for your single pole 30 amp breaker. So here's my 30 amp breaker. You can see there's a screw right there. You're gonna loosen that screw and put your black wire sure it's nice and tight tuck at it a little bit um, but it's very solid and tight in there 
So the next step is to take off this hold down. So that you can fit your breaker in there. When you're installing this, make sure that this part, that this part, you're clicking it right into there, okay? So you're gonna put the bottom in first and then just push it in place. You can hear it kind of click in there. And then you can put your, uh, your hole down back, back on there right there. All right, so that's the 30 amp is in. And before you tighten everything down, make sure that you check your wires to see if you, if you cut off enough or if you strip that back enough so that you can, uh, so my white will reach there and my ground will reach. So it looks like we're good. Okay, so the next thing I'm gonna connect my my white wire and my ground wire. Towards the end, I'm just kind of hand tightening it. Um, I don't want to stress this board out too much. However, it seems it can handle quite a bit. Just kind of tuck your wires so that it looks neat and um, you're happy with it. Now I can focus on all my AC circuits. The four remaining actual circuits. I wanted to show you this tandem breaker. This is a the 1520. So this has a 15 amp circuit and a 20 amp circuit. Same thing, it has two screws at the bottom. So I'm gonna be feeding my black wire into here. So I'm gonna have to strip these guys back. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that and get that ready. So my first two circuits is gonna be my kitchen and then also my fridge. And my fridge is gonna be on a dedicated circuit by itself. And the kitchen is gonna be a 20 amp service. And the fridge is gonna be a 15 amp service. Those two circuits are gonna go on this tandem breaker. The kitchen's gonna go on the 20 on this first one. And then the fridge will go on the 15 amp. You wanna take both black wires. You wanna make sure that you're connecting it to the right circuits. If you turn this, it has a screw that comes out and then you stick your black wire into this hole here and then you tighten it. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. So that one is my fridge. So this is the kitchen, so this is the 20 amp service. So I'm gonna go ahead and loosen the screw. So I'm going to loosen both of these, connect my black wires. So this is my kitchen. So that's going to get the 20 amp service. I'll wind that a little bit to make it a little tighter. So kitchen, 20 amp. Start tightening that. And make sure to tighten it really tight. Make sure it's snug. That's, um, that's the most dangerous thing about electrics is things being loose. That's how fires start. So as you can see there, There's no exposed wire or anything. So the next one, we're gonna do the, the fridge. 
do the black wire for the fridge. And this is gonna turn like that, so. These wires will come off to their respective bus bars, the neutral and the ground bus bar. You're gonna slide the bottom in and then click it into place. And that's it guys. It's as simple as that. You can see there, it fits right next to the 30 amp service. Um, I'm gonna have another tandem breaker that's gonna go into that slot there. Same here guys, the greens are gonna go to the ground bar at the back. The whites are gonna go to the neutral bar here. So I've stripped my wire for the last two circuits. This is gonna be for the TV and the water heater. So I got all four circuits in, you can see here, I have a 20 amp breaker, a 15 amp breaker, 20 amp breaker, and a 15 amp breaker. Those are tandem breakers. So they occupy one space, which is great because you can run more circuits. So this will be my kitchen, my fridge, my TV with four other outlets, and then my water heater on a 15 amp service. You can see here, everything is wired there. All my whites went into the front here. All my greens, my grounds went into the back and then all your blacks go directly into the breaker itself. So I hope this is helpful for anybody out there looking for an alternative to some kind of breaker box for RV, for van, for DIY solar, off-grid solar. This can run both AC and DC. So you have a DC and an AC side, so, and it's all contained in one package. So the next step is to put the main board on there and then it has a cover that can close. I'm not gonna go into that. My main thing was to show you the installation. I hope this was helpful. You're all wired up. This is your AC side. And then you got your DC side. Very simple, guys. I hope this video was helpful. For anybody out there doing something similar or interested in some kind of distribution box um, that can handle both AC and DC. If you have any questions, let me know. If you have any suggestions, let me know. Um, I appreciate you guys watching. Thank you for watching. Thank you for subscribing. Um, it really helps the channel grow. You know, I'm the same way if uh, I don't know how to do something um, and there's a video out there that's helpful, it really does help a lot. So please hit the like button, please subscribe. Guys, thank you so much for watching. Take care and uh, have a great week, guys. Bye.